Within the Half-Life community, Breen Grubb invokes an intriguing and mysterious moment during a period of time before Half-Life Alex's release. It's not a game, or a comic, or a movie, or anything interesting for the gaming market. Rather, it's reading. Ramblings from a distant madman talking about otherworldly creatures accompanied with self-doubt and frustration at his past. It is a Twitter account created in May 2012, five years after Half-Life 2 Episode 2 was released, by series writer Mark Laidlaw. Breen was Laidlaw's favorite Half-Life character, and as Laidlaw stated in his Twitter, Basically it's me writing Dr. Breen fanfic. I am his biggest fan. So what was exactly written in Breen Grub? And how did it impact the community's understanding of the Half-Life storyline? The story begins with gibberish, as Breen adapts to his new form, of which he has yet to reveal. He soon recomposes himself, writing coherent sentences to reveal critical information stolen from them. You will need this information if you are to succeed. I cannot use it. I am beyond useless. If I can't be of use, that is enough. He brings reassurance to the fact that something can always be defeated, citing himself as proof because he failed to stop Freeman, who had circumvented them and destroyed their citadel. He then begins writing about the advisors using the term Shu'ulathoi because they don't recognize that term. The term originates from the Vorticon's language, where Breen speculates it was developed with defying their understanding in mind. He goes on about his illusion of freedom, having been confined all alone in darkness with his thoughts. It is only with their attention he gets a sense of reality. Suddenly, I have had to be quiet. I sense their interest. Must wait for the scuttling to stop. He would go into silence for one year. I think they are gone. Breen continues to write about the Shu'ulathoi origin planet, unsure if anyone will ever find it. Its existence was initially hidden from him when he was Earth's administrator. He later confirmed the planet's existence through combine communications he once had access to. He then senses a presence near him, worrying about going to silence again. Frustrated, he remarks about the vehicle which contains me vehicle being a wretched term for something that carries me nowhere, this host body. The host body stands on a volatile planet with extremely harmful seasons. The globular cluster experiences waves of intense radiation, followed by days of nothingness, all within Breen's speculation. He returns to the Shu'ulathoi, writing about the larvae stage where they lay dormant awaiting their hatching, although not wasting any time inside. Once they hatch and mature, they only focus on reproduction as they crawl or fly to mate and lay eggs. Breen does mention how the adults could dictate their form after hatching through the psychic strength they possess. But they decide to be mindless, even ravenous, airy nothings as they copulate with others. However, Breen unfolds their revelation from the larvae. It is in their dormant form they thrive. Philosophers, scientists. These larvae are abundantly, almost infinitely intelligent as they dream intricate ideas, craft unseen worlds, and weave their intergalactic culture. The intelligence they wield is valuable enough to be considered a currency as they telepathically share their visions. As soon as they hatch, however, they lose all of the knowledge from the larvae who don't even acknowledge the adults. As they thrive in their dimension of dreams, this dormant state is what Breen describes as the seeds of their own destruction. The Combine, referred to as they or them in all caps, infected the Shu'ulathoi with something that malformed their thoughts, a sort of parasite. It quickly spread among the larvae. The whole race of sleeping philosophers was soon infected. Some survived and withstood the parasite's influence, although it still lingers inside of them. Most had succumbed to the thought paths of depravity and were unable to reproduce. Soon, the parasite ingrained itself into the Shu'ulathoi, who unwillingly carried it. 
the Shu'ulotoi had put in place a sort of quarantine, where they would sever infected larvae from their telepathy. Those in quarantine were left to die in solitude. Eons of the parasite going rampant past before the Combine became interested in the Shu'ulothoi. All of a sudden, Breen felt that he was transported into another host body. He can only assume because he doesn't have any external sensory input. Fearful, he indulges in his assumption and asks how and why he was moved. He fears that the Combine may have found his communications, but also considers someone looking out for him by switching bodies. He could have been terminated, only to have another copy of his consciousness activated. At any rate, a discontinuity plagues his mind, and Breen enters a silence for six months. He stabilizes and writes about a repository filled with many copies of his consciousness each one slightly younger than the next, and possibly altered to comply with the Combine's agenda. He questions the motive of the person who is moving him, seemingly reverting his consciousness to an earlier version of itself each move. I feel I am getting farther and farther away from myself, a standard bearer without an army. Make of me of what you will. He keeps moving, on and on and on, Thoughts forming then forgetting as the next consciousness enters. He starts to feel youthful as he becomes optimistic in his mission to reveal the Combine's secrets. The Combine had invaded the Shu'ulothoi planet for the Parasite, which absorbed the larvae's valuable intelligence. They weaponized the Parasites, which were so concentrated in thought it became a tangible material. Modified Parasites are reintroduced into the host to create advisors. Eons of culture had been destroyed. Otherworldly brilliant minds had been rotted as the species became combined puppets. At first, the larvae believed the parasite was a natural cause. However, they had fully realized what was going on. Some that became advisors fell into hibernation that would last for thousands of years, still asleep at the time of writing. Others took flight by some mechanism that Breen doesn't understand. The larvae began to understand this parasite and quickly engineered countermeasures to prevent any further damage. Their home world transformed into a combine nursery as it harvested all of the natural resources. The parasite could have enabled the combine to refine its technology in implanting and creating consciousness, which may have helped them create the repository of brains. The finest minds are stored, then imprinted, replicated over and over on an endless supply of hosts. Laszlo is here somewhere. Laszlo was a character from Half-Life 2 Sand Traps where he died from antlions. The accompanying man of remarks that Laszlo was the finest mind of his generation. Somehow, the Combine obtained Laszlo's consciousness prior to his death and produced possibly thousands of copies of his mind. Breen then writes about the copies of his consciousness, with the first one created as a condition of Earth's surrender. Many backups were made, including the consciousness right before his supposed death the one where Breen seems apprehensive in acknowledging it. So I believe it lost. Or at any rate, I am not derived from that one. Fear envelops Breen as he tries to fully understand how these copies were made. He starts hearing overwhelming signals before hearing speech. Oh grub poets and philosophers, I feel I have discovered my true kin. He embraces the sound perhaps embraces it too much, as it soon leaves him. Too late, all fled, extinct, nor nearly, alone and scattered, each of us alone with our desperate need. He feels unworthy to the Shu'ulothoi and the Vortigaunts, having sided with the Combine for humanity's sake. He continues to mope about what he did as Earth's administrator, 
and even deems himself as untrustworthy. Apparently, there are things I will have done that the Vortigons will not tell me. They will not have me slow in despondency. Even wonders if the Vortigons are working with the Combine, feigning their fight for their freedom. Casting that thought aside, he prays for the remaining Sha'ulathoi to wake up and meet him. Vortigaunt chants fill the atmosphere as he reminisces in his loneliness. This feeling fueled his frustration and anger at constantly hiding from the Combine, even in his immobile state. They want me to be still, but I cannot. I've had enough of stillness. Why should I flee again? Why should I fear? What do I really know? These thoughts could be mere madness, speculation. I will not be silenced. So what if they find me here? At least it would be something. I don't care if they hear me. Do you hear? I don't care. I will not be muffled. Don't move me again. No more shifting from dark to dark. No more. Hello, friends. He returns with a sarcastic tone, introducing a perfectly secure channel. He asks the reader to speak their hopes, fears, and dreams out loud as though he can hear them. Most importantly, the reader needs to share their specific location along with the location of their family and friends. After asking for the reader's location, he then asks, we would like to hear all about your plans, and not only your own, but the plans of your c-c-c-cocoon. Even if the reader doesn't answer, their information will be obtained by lurking through the Twitter account, with Breen encouraging more reading. You'll be glad you came. Signal interrupt. Signal interrupt. Signal interrupt. Breen hasn't returned since July 6, 2014. Breen Gub formed the community's understanding of the Combine Advisors and how they were a slave race similar to the Vortigaunts. Many fans discovered the Twitter account and speculated how these tweets relate to the next Half-Life game, possibly as an alternate reality game. ARGs have been used to promote games. The popular I Love Bees ARG involved players analyzing a fictional website, which was hacked, to find clues that revealed the backstory. The game ended by inviting players into cinemas where they can play Halo 2 before its release. Portal 1 also had an ARG that involved hidden images in the radio songs to promote Portal 2. However, Laidlaw has stated that this Brain Grub Twitter is not related to anything specific. Brain Grub is me having fun with some things that I love. It's not an ARG, it is what it is. Because of Laidlaw's comments, there's been debate on whether or not Brain Grub is canon into the Half Life storyline. Most people regard the tweets as canon, but online sources of Half Life lore, such as the Half Life Wiki and Combine Over Wiki, consider the account non canon. Breengrub had also been integral to the potential continuation of the series. When Epistle 3 was revealed in 2017, Breen was shown in his grub form, continuing as Earth's administrator in the Borealis. He feared Freeman because he remembered his human fate. However, Breen asks to be mercy killed, where the player decides whether or not to end his suffering. Of course, Breen's fate had been created by Laidlaw, keeping in mind that both Episode 3 and Breengrub were written after Laidlaw left Valve. Valve designer Robin Walker said to Kotaku, My reaction to Epistle 3 was largely, Oh, I've seen these kind of things from Mark before. They're like a dump of something he's thinking of at the time. Green Grub had become the foundation of some of the popular Half-Life theories due to the new information on the advisors. One prominent theory that cited Green Grub involves a peculiar character's origins. This tweet explains that Hatshu Ulithoi use their psychic strength to take the form of anything they desire. Because of this tweet, people began to speculate that the G-Man could have been a transformed Sha'ulathoi. They want to reclaim the universal control from the Combine, which is where the G-Man comes to play. 
He's responsible for recruiting candidates such as Gordon Freeman and Adrian Shepard to help his employers, aka the Shu'ulathoi. However, Breen mentions that the mature Shu'ulathoi become mostly lifeless and are rampant in reproduction. Whether this theory holds any weight in the future is yet to be known. Breen Grub is an interesting take on expanding video game lore, especially important to Half-Life because of its very, very sparse release schedule. Using Twitter as a platform for storytelling was unique at the time, before being popularized by other storytelling accounts such as The Sun Vanished and Dear David. As Half-Life Alex proved that Valve is still interested in creating Half-Life games, the continuity of Breen Grub could be altered or disregarded altogether. The enigmatic Twitter account remains silent, concealing many more secrets that have yet to be known. Thank you very much for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the usual. Don't forget to check out my Twitch. I'm doing a Half-Life Marathon and I'll get to Half-Life 2 and whatever I can. And check out the Funky Discord is where you can talk to me directly and other people in my community. Uh, stay safe and thanks again for watching.